Well, g'day, g'day, and welcome back once again to Yunfu. We're still here. Uh, so today we're going to take a little walk uh, around this lake you can see behind me here. And then we're going to head off down back down this way. There is uh, what looks like a couple of villages and a industrial area down there. So we're going to take a little stroll around, see what we can see here. So we can see here, this is called Yu Wong Lake Park. We have these sculptures here on the side. And then we have just a small lake sitting down here where I haven't actually been down here at night time, but I imagine this is another of those places where a lot of people gather of an evening to come and just walk, exercise on their way around. So yeah, we're going to take a stroll around here and then head out the back and see what we can see. See if there's anything of interest out, out there. Happy riding. Oh, we've actually got a measured riding track here. So it must be 800 meters around the lake, start finish line. So you can keep track of how far you're exercising, whether you're walking or riding or whatever. So what do we have here? It's a little drinks machine. So yeah, if you're feeling thirsty, uh, so once again, as before, use the WeChat, scan the QR code, enter your whatever drinks you want, and they'll pop out the bottom. Uh, they are very common everywhere you go. So we've had a uh, good three nights of performing. All the kids did really, really well. Uh, I had a thoroughly enjoyable time. Uh, really really good sound system they've got in that shopping center i don't know if the uh if the uh sound system belongs to the shopping center or if a private company actually owns it and just sort of keeps it there for their use because they use it on a regular basis but it's very nice and this little lake here is very beautiful i imagine this would be very nice to walk around at night I hope my microphone's not picking up too much noise. It's quite windy. If you look up at the sky here, there's a lot of clouds up there. Uh, we're actually expecting rain again in about 45 minutes. So we'll see how we go. I did check the weather app before I came out. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of rain coming by the look of it. So we'll see how we go with this walk. See just how far we can actually get. Uh, have a look on our right here, we can see these apartment buildings, they all look probably within five years old. I wouldn't think they're much more than that. They're still doing a lot of the, uh, a lot of the road construction down the back here, so they're extending this out further as we go. But we're actually going to sort of veer off to the left, and there's, yeah, a couple of old villages down there by the, by the look of it. I can't promise that's what we're going to see. Uh, so I'm basically using Baidu maps uh, and I'm just getting a top-down view so it looks like a couple of villages from the top but you know it could end up being bloody 20-story high apartment buildings you're never quite sure right so we're gonna duck over this little bridgeway over the lake here So yeah, the performances over the last three nights have been really good, really wide variety of different things that the kids are learning from martial arts, uh, dance stuff, singing, uh, a lot of traditional uh, traditional Chinese stuff that they've you know started off on. And we'll try and get in the future a performance of some adults doing this sort of material, you know, people who have been doing it for a lot longer and show you what sort of thing that they're probably aiming for in the future. Have this beautiful pagoda up here in the in the center of this walkway, absolutely beautiful. I do love this this type of architecture. It's real style and beauty about it. Uh, yeah, so some of the standout performers for me would have been, uh, well, young Emily singing because she's 
she's a friend. I guess I have to put her on top of my list. Uh, yeah, she, for someone who's, what is she, 10 years old, she sings incredibly well. Really good control of her voice. I actually went, uh, went and sat in on one of her singing lessons with her, with her singing teacher and just just sat back and watched and yeah she the teacher's very good as well she really gets the most out of her so that was good to see um the other one that you might have noticed is the young girls doing the the actually no it was three young girls and a young guy doing the hosting so another very common thing here that people take part in is actually learning how to host events so something our college has as well so all the college students are doing extracurricular stuff, you know, whether they're playing sport or playing musical instruments or whatever they may be doing. One of the activities they can choose is to learn hosting. So you're actually learning how to now, uh, how to host big events like that. Uh, so they learn not only the what do you say and all that sort of thing, but also uh, you know, how to stand and all that sort of stuff, how to look graceful. I'm just trying to find my way out to which way we want to get through here. I've got a feeling we might duck over this little... No, we won't. We'll duck out through this way. Get up to this road in front of us. Um, other really cool performers. Uh, one that... I really like is the one they do with the fans the uh, I mean the dance itself is like any other dance I guess I'm not much of a dancer so they all look pretty similar to me but one thing I love is when they flick the fans open and you get that uh, sort of cracking it's almost like a whip crack I always love that it's just a nice moment in those routines uh, yeah, I think all the kids had a really good time. They, um, yeah, they did really, really well. I don't know how long they've been practicing for this event or how often they actually get to perform, but they all had a really good time. And we had kids from, I think the youngest performer was four years old, going right up to, well, right up to me. I was the oldest. So most of the performers were, were children. There were a couple of adults here and there. But yeah, it was all kids mainly. So we're now down onto fairly main road, although it's still, still fairly quiet down here. There's still a lot of development happening. So the road hasn't really gotten as busy as I think it will get in the future when once more of these apartment buildings are finished. There's more businesses opening up out here. Uh, we are sort of in a bit of a, an empty space between where we're staying, like the main part of the city here, and the next village. There's sort of not much in between the two. So, yeah, there's a little bit less traffic happening here. So we can see in here a lot of groundworks going on in here. So they're obviously getting ready to either build up more business area or more apartment style buildings. Not sure at this stage, but if we come back in a year, they'll probably be done. We're getting pretty close to done. You'll have a good idea on what's happening. Oh, wow. Look at this. Okay. This, uh, sort of well it's not really around well i guess it is a roundabout but uh so this must be the entrance to sing sing which is the sort of suburb that we're staying in now this big beautiful grassed and planted roundabout area with this magnificent statue up in the up in the center here as you're entering into the city There's something new. I haven't seen that one before. Okay. 
Let's carry on our way. So then, through the uh, center of the two directions of traffic, we have this beautiful, uh, another sort of garden area, hedges, all shaped hedges in here. Oh, that was some sort of emergency vehicle going by. I'm not entirely sure what that was. Maybe, oh, it might be something to do with the fire department. Uh, as we were leaving the home where I'm staying, there were actually a couple of fire engines went past with their lights flashing and sirens blaring. So, yeah, he might be something to do with the fire department heading out following the... Uh, doing follow-up on whatever wherever the fire department we're headed to I can't see any smoke rising anywhere so hopefully they're just out on a drill and it's not it's not a real emergency okay here we have service station so unlike Australia a lot of service stations in Australia lately have gone self-serve in the last 20 years it's very rare, especially where I come from, to get a service station where you're actually serviced. Whereas service stations here, you know, they'll have, you know, you go to a big service station, they'll have 12 or 14 people out the front just waiting for cars to come in so they can put fuel in and wipe the windows and do all that sort of stuff that you do when you fill your car up. Here's another lovely sculpted tree. I do love the way they do this. There's actually, uh, when we get back to Jiaqing, I'll go and try and find, there's a lovely, like a hedge, but it's been cut in the shape of a dragon. And it's absolutely spectacular. It looks amazing. We'll uh, go and see if we can remember where that one is. It's down near Seven Star Crag somewhere. So lots of trucks on the road here with the uh, one of the big industries here is uh, rock carving so I'm hoping we can find a factory where they do that sort of stuff I'll give you a look oh that wind's starting to pick up a bit more hopefully we can get to this village and be undercover before the next shower moves in on us. Okay, I hope my microphone is not picking up too much of this wind noise. But on the right here we see a building under, under renovation. Uh, looks like some sort of restaurant They're refurbishing the front. You'll notice the scaffolding is all made of bamboo. Generally, if they're only going up you know, three or four floors, they'll use bamboo as scaffolding and just tie it together with string. <laughs> it's uh, pretty cool. If they're going higher than that, they use proper steel, steel scaffolding. But, you know, if they're not going up too high, just whack up some bamboo. She'll be right. Ah, oh, check this little three-wheel... Uh, trying to see, will this be an electric vehicle? Let's have a look at the number plate on the back. We've got a green number, okay, it's not a real number plate. Ah, uh, no, I think that is a small gasoline motor. But uh, I've not been in one of them. I'd love to, love to give one a try one of these days. Okay, carrying on. Ah... Uh, Right, we're going to cross the road over here. Oh, green light. Let's, let's pick up the pace a little bit, go for a little run. So we see it's a fairly new road coming this way. And then if we swing the other way, see they haven't actually finished this one yet. So this road here will go down to the park where we were playing in uh, the first couple of nights we were here. 
Uh, right, we're going to chuck a right, and there's a little lane here that's going to take us down into this village on our left. So you see down here, once again, all the gardens, everybody growing their vegetables, so everybody, will, all the people in the village over here will have their little plot in here to grow their own vegetables. Again, whether that's for their own consumption or for selling, I'm not sure. I guess everybody's does their own way. <laughs> so we see this building in front of us wrapped up in the green fabric. So we can see, well, you probably can't see, but I can see from here that is metal scaffolding they're using there. So they're going up, what have we got? One, two, three, four floors. So yeah, four floors, we're using metal. We're not gonna, we're not gonna risk it with, uh, with bamboo. <laughs> right, now we have a choice. We can go either around to our left here, or we can go around to our right here. I think, Okay, I can hear an emergency vehicle coming. What have we got coming down this way? Okay, that is a... No, it's taken off. Can't see. Okay. Um, okay, we'll head around to the left here and then we'll come back and maybe duck back through this side over here see what we can see down this one first. <laughs> so as far as I can see so far, all of these are individual houses in here, uh, as opposed to being apartment buildings like you get when you get into the more populated areas. But we'll see if that holds true as we move through inside the village. So you see, I've, if that might be sugar cane that we're looking at there. Looks like some sort of beans in here. Maybe mang... Oh, are they mango trees in there? I'm not sure. Okay. You notice if you look on the doorway of this house, you see the red writing. So they're all done for uh, luck and stuff, especially Chinese New Year. They'll put up things like that on their on their doorways. Try and bring some luck. Okay, so here's some older structures in here. So like I say, they will have rebuilt their house somewhere and then use these old structures for storage of, you know, whether it's firewood or gardening implements or whatever else people like to store. I guess it depends on what you're into as, as to what you need to store for yourself. So we have, uh, big solar water system up on the roof of this house uh yeah when you get out here a lot of places have solar solar water systems to provide their hot water it's much cheaper than using electricity all the time uh there's a lot less of that when you get into apartment buildings because well <laughs> too many people to provide that much hot water for on too small a roof space. Oh, what are these red flowers on this tree? The um, one thing I was surprised to see when we got here was uh, when I got to Jiaqing was in our school, we have a lot of Australian bottle brush plants, which have the red flowers and red being a, a color of luck here. 
They love flowers that are red. So here we have some more older, older buildings. This little artwork up on the top here. It's very cool. Just uh, well, that one there is just built with stones by the look of it, embedded into the plaster. Okay, we're back up onto the main road here. Okay, this building in front of us looks to me like a whole lot of car businesses. A lot of them are closed still. We're still a bit early, I think. But I can see a car cleaning place, tyre, tyre fitters, another car servicing place, another car cleaning place. So yeah, I'm guessing that's probably one where a lot of people will bring cars to get some work done. <coughs> Okay, we have a big open area on our right up here. Let's have a look at what we've got here. Okay, if we look uh, up over here, we have another section of the river down here. Heading off around the corner. So once again, that's all connected up to the Shi River which also runs through into Jiaqing. Wow, that water's, that water's fairly running down there. We might uh, see if we can find a bit of space on the bank somewhere over this side to see if we can get a better look. Also, we've got a bit of a, bit of a whirlpool action happening in there. So the water's coming in and swirling back around the other way. That's, uh, there's a fair amount of water running down that little uh, little river area there. Can't get any closer. I'd love to be able to get down to the bank a bit closer and have a look, but not able to. Okay, here's these fire engines that I mentioned earlier. So they're on their way back. So it must have just been a uh, training drill or something, or something that's not such an emergency. Maybe a false alarm of some some point, some some type. Okay, we have a lighting shop here. It's one thing I mentioned on oh, one of the walks I did was the lights. They uh, love their lighting here. So this is all interior, interior lighting for your house. Lots of chandelier type stuff and things like that. They do love that sort of stuff here. Another car detailing shop. Come and get your car cleaned. Yeah, there are lots of those types of places everywhere. Uh, just where I'm living in Jiaqing, you know, there's half a dozen within five or six hundred metres. Okay, so we have a little industrial shops down here. So we have a ceramic place, a lot of building supplies down the back there. Uh, so it looks like more of a yard for builders to come and shop at rather than for individuals. It's not like your home hardware type stores down there. Okay, we have on our left here, we have a Nissan dealership. And then we swing back around the other side. We have here Toyota. Uh, surprised I can't see any other car dealerships here they uh, they generally will all group together so if you've got a couple of car dealerships there's a good chance that all the car dealerships are going to be there but it doesn't appear to be the case here okay let's duck around to the right here let's walk through this car park try and avoid that road So another car detailing shop. And then next door here, what have we got in here? Let's... Okay, this looks like uh, kitchen accessories. So pots, pans, uh, electric kettles, microwaves, I can see. 
uh, yeah, all the sort of stuff you use in your kitchen for for cooking and the like. Oh, they've even got some uh, so big industrial sized freezers in there. There's water dispensers. One thing I've get, never gotten used to here is drinking hot water. Now the Chinese do that all the time. They uh, have this belief that it's healthy and stuff better for you than cold water. Whether or not it's true, I don't know. Might just be an old wives tale, but, but it's something I can't do. My water has to be cold. Oh, we're just feeling a few drops of rain on us. Uh, it's good timing to reach this little area where we have these balconies hanging over the top of us. Hopefully this will be one of those showers that uh, comes in and disappears again within five minutes. So here we have another place under construction. You see, see the scaffold here. It's just, again, all bamboo. It's just tied together with these uh, with this string so that's how they do it here I don't think the uh, health and safety bods in Australia would be <laughs> would be very uh, up and liking that idea very much There's one thing I absolutely love about China you sort of you're more free to make your own decisions and if you know you want to take a chance you can the uh, yeah it's one thing that just gone absolutely silly in Australia all this bloody health and safety stuff I mean there's places where yes you need health and safety regulations but we don't need near as much as what we tend to have at least I don't believe so so we have some kids up in front of us here look like they're off to classes somewhere so that's one thing even though it's school holidays a lot of the kids here will still go and do classes in private schools and the like so for example, young Emily is off doing mathematics classes every day, including the weekend, uh, while, while she's on school holidays. And Joanna, her older sister, she is off uh, working in a private school teaching uh, English to, you know, five, six, seven year olds. So yeah, a lot of the kids, even though they're on school holidays, they're still off learning. Okay, we're gonna veer down to our right here. See if we can't find this other little village down through here. And it looks like we might have a few factories down here as well. So we've got a place on our left. I can hear work being done in here. We'll get down, see if we can have a uh, look in the gate, see what they're making in there. So we have, I don't know how well you can see that, but that looks like a recycling plant. So there's a lot of old kitchen gear in there, pots and pans and the likes. You can see some fans, refrigerator, air conditioning units, old wheelbarrows, all sorts of things. In here, what do we have in here? So this is, I have no idea what they we might be manufacturing in there. Can I see a sign anywhere? No, it's nothing. So back over here you can see a lot of aluminium down there been broken down so it looks like that's some sort of a recycling plant in there okay we have another factory of some sort down here they are their name is link fair and okay everything's inside we can't really see anything there 
and see all the workers, all their bikes lined up here. The, uh, yeah, like I say, still a predominant form of transport here. Two wheels over four. But, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see as the uh, sort of population becomes better off, more wealthy. It'll be interesting to see how the dynamics between bikes and cars change. I mean, I've noticed it myself in Jiaqing over six years. Uh, there does appear to be sort of less bikes than there was. There's still a whole heap of bikes, but cars seem to be increasing in popularity. It's probably 20, 25% more traffic on the roads from when I arrived, especially with the uh, electric cars now coming on stream and they're very, very reasonably priced and they're very, very cheap to run. So yeah, a lot of people are going that way now. <laughs> yeah, when I first, first got here, electric cars were quite rare. There were quite a few hybrids on the road, but electric cars were generally tiny little box things that might seat two people at a squeeze. But now they are, you know, companies like Xpeng and BYD are making big, beautiful, really nice electric vehicles. And they're doing it all at a very, very reasonable price. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch that change of the dynamic change. They're hard at work putting in uh, power, power points, power charging stations for electric cars all around Jiaqing at the moment. Now, there was none of them when I first arrived and now they are absolutely everywhere. And there's more going in all the time. It's uh, just a constant, constant upgrading. Okay, what do we got up here on the right? We have Guangdong Ming Li. I can't quite read that with the sun shining on it. Get a bit closer. Okay, Aquatic Product Group. So as we duck down the back here we'll see if we can see over the fence and see what sort of stuff they're manufacturing uh, we'll keep going this way oh, what have we got in front of us okay we've got rain on the way so we're actually going to turn around head back up this road get ourselves under some shelter because uh, yeah, once this rain starts coming, it's going to get pretty heavy pretty quick, I think. So, uh, we might just have to get back to you in a few minutes' time. So, one thing you see everywhere here is these uh, little covers they have on their bikes, which we can see over here, this person on a bike here wearing one. It just connects to their handlebars and then uh, keeps them dry in the wet weather. It's uh, quite cool. We don't really use that. You know, we wear proper wet, wet weather gear in Australia. You don't really see that sort of thing as you're going around Australia. So we're just sitting down here waiting for this rain to stop, which it has almost eased up. I think I'm gonna pull out an umbrella and we're gonna carry on with our little walk. So we are now operating under an umbrella. It is raining pretty steady out there. Uh, we're going to carry on our walk. We're heading down towards this next little village. Just thought I'd show you here on the, uh, on the left here. This apartment building here is actually, most of the apartments in there, or dormitories really, will be single room with a connected bathroom and the like. So that'll be for workers who come to work in the factories out here from different areas. So they'll come maybe stay a couple of weeks in a dormitory 
uh, just work hard, long hours, long days, and then, you know, maybe go home, I don't know how often, once a month, once every couple of months, maybe only during the uh, school holidays or the, not school holidays, holiday periods. So mid-autumn festival, spring festival, Chinese New Year, that sort of thing. A lot of them probably work a lot of the year around and only go home once or twice a year. So, <laughs> someone there trying to yell hello as he rode past on his motorbike. I was too slow to reply, he's already gone. So just check the, uh, check the weather app just before we uh, restarted filming here. And we've actually got thunderstorms on the way in. Thunder and lightning in the area, so we're going to try and get to this other little village area quickly and uh, we try and have some shelter around us when that sort of storm hits. We'll see how we go, see whether we make it or not. Oh, this wind blowing my umbrella around. We so we have this looks like just a little uh, little factory area. So there's lots of little individual little places in there for small companies. You know, maybe one or two man operations doing small jobs, making components for bigger items. Oh, something's smelling bad here. Smells like some sort of fertilizer manufacturing or something somewhere around here. Where's the wind's coming on our left shoulder, so must be a fertilizer factory or something of that type over here. It smells absolutely rank. Oh, we can see in here there's more of these more of these fish facilities like we saw over in the other little village yesterday. So, so not only that little area that does it, it's spread out all around the place. Okay, let's just duck over the road, see if we can have a little look in this. Okay, so we've got metal manufacturing, sheet metal sort of stuff in here. By the look of it. As you know, maybe not. Let's see if we can have a look from this other side here. Uh, it looked like sheet metal manufacturing sort of machinery in there, but it looked like the guy was handling something more like leather. So we'll see if we can have a, uh, yeah, okay, so we've got rolls of leather in there. So he's, uh, manufacturing something of some sort. Have a look what we can see. Oh, he's, uh, yeah, no idea. Maybe uh, getting stuff together for furniture manufacturers and stuff like that. And then here we have these, more of these fish tanks, growing fish. So it must be a, uh, have so many of them here, it must be a profitable little, little sideline to have. Okay, another factory here on our left. Let's see if we can see through this gate and see what's being made in this one. Okay, Ishuan Lingere Limited. So, Lingere must be making underwear and the like. More of these little fish tanks in here. Although those ones are all empty, looks like Actually, I'm guessing by the look of those, the brickwork there, it doesn't actually look like they're cemented in. So they might be uh, just in the process of building some new fish ponds there for... Okay, we have a little basketball court over here. Another, looks like another sort of community hall sort of, sort of thing in there. And then over on our right, it's all houses here on the right. These ones are all very, very close together. So there's no space between houses here. You had your sort of front yard, which in most cases is just a car park. And then 
As you can see, we're going up three, four, one up here, which is, what is that? One, two, three, four, six floors. So, must have a bit of money, that one. <laughs> but then if we, uh, we look down the back, this little alleyway here, down the back of these places, they'll have this uh, sort of open space in the back where they will grow their vegetables and the things like that. Or they'll have a little area where the kids can go to play. So housing on one side of the road, factories and the like on the other. Oh, okay, we're past that uh, smell of fertilizer. I wouldn't like to be living downwind of that place. That'd be uh, pretty rank. Okay, what do we got here? Sinching Shan Sheng Heng Machine Company Limited. Can't really see what's going on in there. More of these fish fish ponds. A lot more fish ponds down this way. And then up here we've got this interesting looking machine. Looks like some sort of large cement mixer, which you can tow behind a car or a truck. One of these three wood bikes. Recycle another recycling spot. So see lots of bags of aluminium cans and things in there. Big stacks of cardboard. All the, all sorts of recycling materials. Uh, in here we have lots of foam. So when you get a delivery here, you can actually like get uh, frozen goods and stuff ordered. So they all come in these in these foam boxes here that we see, and. Uh, so yeah, you get a lot of that sort of stuff here. Uh, now that COVID's over, I'm trying to get away from ordering all that stuff online now because I hate all that packaging that you get. Um, yeah, a lot of the shops here, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but during the, during the COVID situation, we had uh, QR codes that you can scan. So every time you go into a shop or uh, shopping center, supermarket, whatever, you have to scan a QR code. And they had two different QR codes you could scan. One of which I could use, and the other one you needed to have a Chinese ID card to be able to use. So, if the shopping centre was using the QR code that I had, I could go in there, but a lot of them were using the other QR code, so I couldn't really access it at all. What's this? AMPM, 200 metres. We've got a koala bear on there, so let's go have a look what that might be. we we'll go for a little stroll down here. So yeah, there are a lot of places where I just I couldn't access very easily, so I uh, I ended up just getting into the habit of ordering things on Taobao or JD, getting a lot of stuff delivered because it was just too difficult to try and get into a lot of shops around the place. But uh, it all worked out well. It uh, oh, we got a big truck coming in past us here. We're just going to move right over to the side here. Oh, this wind. Okay, he's got, he's got a load of crates on the back there for carrying chickens. Okay. Crikey Moses, this blooming wind is blowing me crazy. And the rain's just starting to pick up again now. <laughs> so see, I'm not sure what they have in here, but they've got this big chimney stack pointing up there to the sky. 
don't know how high that is. It might be uh, 20, 25 meters tall. But I can't see from this side what is actually inside there. Okay, I can't see what that sign might have been pointing to. So we're going to head back this way. We have here more of these fish ponds down here leading into a couple of larger lakes down here which I don't know if that's where they put their once the fish have grown to full size they whack them down in the lake there until they're ready to be caught and eaten I suppose I don't actually eat much of the fish here uh, a lot of what they eat here is freshwater fish and bleh, I just can't stand it ocean fish is great but no nah, freshwater fish there's something about it that just doesn't taste quite right. Alright, seems as if the rain might have stopped for just a minute, so we're gonna pull this umbrella pull this umbrella down. Aye. And see how long we can uh, last without the umbrella blowing us around. <laughs> okay, we've got another bridge here. So where we crossed over that river earlier on, this is downstream from there. We cross this, cross this bridge and then we're sort of on the path back to, back to where we started from. Right, we'll get over onto the right hand side. Oh, we see the colourful building in front of us. That will be kindergarten or primary school. I'm guessing that will be another kindergarten. So how tall have we got in there? One, two, three, four floors. Remember, the kindergarten I went to when I was young had two rooms. It's a uh, far cry from what you see here in kindergartens. Is, uh, I've not seen a kindergarten that comes even close to being anything like what we have here. Okay, we're going to stay on the right hand side or we're going to duck over to the left. Oi, wind! Okay, I'm thinking we're going to duck to the other side of the road here because, oi, we might be just a little bit more protected from this, from this wind that is blowing like crazy. If we're lucky. So we're getting into another little, so here's this, it's the front, front of this kindergarten here, a little play area out the front, and then into, into the classrooms. We will, uh, we have a kindergarten in Jiaqing where uh, one of the girls from my school her family run a couple of kindergartens so we might try and uh, see if we can get into one of the schools and actually have a tour around a kindergarten and see what they what they're learning and what sort of stuff they do in kindergarten in china i do go in there occasionally from time to time and uh, try and teach them some english words and stuff play some games play a few songs for them they love it Okay, this looks like it might well be a little private school. So kids come after school and learn whatever subject they're teaching, whether it's mathematics like Emily's doing today, or maybe they go off and do uh, English or other languages, whatever other school subjects they might take part in. Just wait for these cars to go past. Bit of water on the road. I don't want to get splashed <laughs> as uh, as these cars are coming by us. 
Okay, should be safe now. Hey, step over. Okay, it looks like a pharmacy in here. So the pharmacies here, you can get a lot of sort of Western style medicines and you also get uh, a lot of traditional Chinese medicine stuff, which is, yeah, it's interesting. I don't know a lot about it. It's one subject that our school does teach, but I don't know a whole lot about what goes on. So in here we have what looks to be a primary school, I imagine. We've got playgrounds over the back there, plenty of classrooms haven't seen a sign ah, here we go uh, yeah I think that's a primary school that one so as we come through here we see on the left a lot of these shops a lot of these are eating places so they'll open of the evening and then we we'll just hey, stop this umbrella blowing. We have a quick look down here. We've got this old little, old little alleyway through here. Just old buildings. Looks like they're actually still lived in there. Hey, getting blown down the road. Little bakery here, and then. Whew, that was an intense little piece of wind. So, little electronics odds and ends store. And then, I think we are heading up towards the main part of the river where we're living. So, we're getting close to, oh, have a look over here. We have, in here we have chickens, pigeons, ducks, all look like they are ready to be sold. They will butcher them up so and cut them up so they're ready to be taken home, just chucked in the oven or in the frying pan, cooked up. Chicken's good, not a fan of the duck. Haven't tried the pigeon. But knowing me, I wouldn't like pigeon either. I'm a very, very fussy eater. A fruit stall here. And over on the left, Ah, uh, we have a sort of odds and ends, household stuff, brooms, pots, pans, all that sort of thing. We have a little hardware store, and then down the end, looks like uh, gardening supplies. Looks like big bags of fertilizer and uh, soil and stuff sitting in there. So we are now, if I'm correct, no, I don't think I am correct. I think we're going to turn which way? I think we're going to go straight over here. See where we are. Okay, I see where we are now. So this is a bridge that we walked over yesterday to go through that little village through the back of the mountain there. So we are back now onto the road where we where we are staying. So we're probably 500 yards from home I imagine. So we're going to call that for our little walk for today. Uh, I'm going to when these people I'm with drop off their kids to their, well, one of them's off to do a math class, the other one's off to teach English. 
they're going to drop them off and then we're off they're going to come and pick me up and we're off somewhere i don't know where we're going but yeah i'll be sure to uh get back to you and give you a look at whatever we go and do so hope you've enjoyed that little stroll around if you have feel free like share subscribe all that sort of stuff if you have any questions comments whatever chuck them down in the comment section uh if you have any ideas things you would like to see here in china uh yeah give us your suggestions down in the comments what would you like to see a video about uh what sort of things would you like to learn and uh we'll endeavor to cover any subjects you come up with thanks for watching guys and we will see you in the next one take care